I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, Pooja. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Myself, Pooja, and I'm associated with Desapex as a project engineer. And we also have Mr. Sridhar Hungun, Senior Project Coordinator at Desapex and Mr. Velan Murudi, Managing Director at DLS Professional. Before starting to our webinar, I'm going to brief about agenda of today's webinar. I'm going to introduce about Desapex and Mr. Sridhar will brief about how BIM can be used for cost management in construction projects, classification of cost data and its use in 5D BIM and potential challenges for 5D BIM. And Mr. Valen will explain about how BIM has impacted the cost management practices, benefits of 5D BIM in cost management over traditional practices and future of cost management, and also followed by question and answer session. I'll start with the introduction of Desapex. So Desapex is a digital engineering organization working towards digital technology integration in the AEC industry to improve the life cycle of built assets. So where we provide complete digital solutions throughout the life cycle of the building or infrastructure, that is design, construction, and operation. Desapex aims at creating a sustainable built environment by enabling digital adoption and integration of technology for target value design. So we are headquartered at Bangalore and we are also operating three major cities in India, Chennai, Hyderabad and Hubli. And also we are serving our clients across the globe. And these are some customer segments which we are serving, starting from the restaurants, hotels and restaurants, corporate real estate and residentials, etc. So wherever there is a capital expenditure and operational expenditure involved, we provide digital solutions over there. So the construction industry is facing multiple challenges in this digital transformation era, majorly so poor coordination between the stakeholders and design complications arising midway during construction can cause the poor productivity. So the 2D drawings can cause the miscommunication between the stakeholders and difficult in rich visualization content such as in animation and rendering, etc. So the running projects without a good project management is a false economy. So it's often thought to be an unnecessary burden on the budget. So the facility data is not uh, mandatory, is not properly transformed to the client at the time of handover. So if the data is lost with the passage of time, then it's very difficult to retrieve for maintenance and renovation. So the lack of standards and regulations can result the tragedy caused by fire. So the structural, uh, structural elements collapse and also the general deterioration, et cetera. So the sustainability can be one of the most challenging aspect of this industry. So it also contributes with 11% of the world's greenhouse gas, em gas emissions. I would like to brief about the digital solutions we are providing to our client, which are three verticals of Desapex, digital design management, digital project management, and digital asset management. So under the digital design management, we provide the solutions for class detection and coordination, architecture structure, MEPF modeling, and BIM-based pre-construction services. So we manage the design under the digital framework for the designs, which are already authored by the consultant, consultants. So under the DPM, uh, digital project management, so we are providing our clients to manage their construction projects digitally, where we provide digital information delivery plan, technical due diligence, and setting up the di uh, digital lab. So under the digital asset management, we assist our clients to digitize their project documents in terms of the latest as-built 2D drawings and also 3D BIM models. So here we actually digitalize the existing physical building like the buildings are after the handover stage or during the operational stage. So we have integrated tool called Graniland Manager and we are partnered with this Finnish company Graniland 
to provide the solutions like bim for facility management in which we provide maintenance energy and asset management and also real estate portfolio management services so regarding the digital twin using reality capture we build as built models by using laser scanning technology that the models can be used for uh, further as built verification and documentation and also construction pro progress monitoring so let's go through some case studies uh, of our projects where integration of technology and digitize digitalization provided great outcome to our clients to meet their desired results so in one of our project where the bim model development and drawing production for one of the biggest mall in malaysia with an approximate area of 10 million square feet so the building had 14 services that way to be coordinated and the layouts were produced for coordinated layouts as per the requirement so the team was highly enthusiastic and hard working towards every deliverable and the coordinated models and layouts were delivered with the utmost quality and standards so we have worked as a bim consultant for a leading electronic manufacturing company with the multiple buildings for approximate area of 600000 square feet so we coordinated with the various stakeholders and made sure that all the services were clash free with the supporting elements for lod 400 then the site is scanned with the laser scanners after the erection of all the services and the model will be updated to lod 500 as per the site conditions for utilization of the model for facility management services so the scan to beam solutions were provided for uh, for an ongoing commercial building of a banking sector with an area of approximate 800000 square feet so as a ddm consultant we also checked for site deviations in structural and also firefighting layouts for a, for as built model coordination with upcoming building services so the digital solutions for virtual walk through of the same ongoing project were also provided for reporting purpose so our approach is we have developed a team uh, capable of integrating design construction parameters into the digital information model so which blends expertise in domain process and tools and also provides owner an unmatched performance and quality project on time this is our team and we have civil mechanical electrical architecture and bim engineers so which is under the leadership of mr shrinidhi and mr varun kumar and this part is usp of desapex and i feel very proud to say that we are the first company in world and only company in india to have this kite mark from british standard institute which is a global standards for bim and it is iso 19650 part 1 and part 2 So this is all about the Desapex portfolio. I would like to hand over now to Mr. Shridhar, who will discuss regarding Quaidi Bim. Thank you. Over to you, Shridhar. Thank you, Pooja. I hope uh, you can hear me. Yes. And now I hope I can. Uh, you can see my screen. Alright. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shridhar Hanugan, and uh, I'm working as a senior project coordinator here at Desapix. And in this session, we will look into how BIM can be used for cost estimation of construction projects. We will look into what classification is and what classification of uh, data, how how it is important to us. And we'll also touch base on some of the potential challenges for 5D BIM implementation. So before we jump into the topic uh, we would like to request the participants to answer this quick poll as to understand what a professional background our audience is in so it will be available for the next 10 seconds please take the time to answer the question Permanent. If can end the poll. <clears throat> okay. So 
So Pooja just explained the productivity and efficiency issues that are persistent in construction industry. It is estimated that the global construction industry revenue will be about 16 trillion US dollars and the Indian market would be around 1.4 trillion by 2025. So in 2020 alone, the Indian construction industry stood at around 6.5 billion in revenue. So you can imagine the extent of the industry and thereby the opportunities that are available for improvement in our project delivery. So we have the poll answers back and we are seeing almost 49% of our uh, audience is from a cost estimation background and 18% project managers. That's very good and uh, that's the kind of audience we were hoping for this webinar. So thank you. So like I was saying, this construction industry has huge potential in uh, in making revenues and also there are opportunities that are available for improvement in our project delivery. The construction industry has a lot of stakeholders who have to collaborate and work together to smoothly transition an idea into an asset. Quantity surveyors work together with the owner to help them get an idea as to how much this asset would cost them to build. They are required to assess the design, the materials, and the timeline involved to ensure that the project cost estimates are accurately worked out. Like designers, cost estimators also start at the initial stages of programming to set up a preliminary budget and then continue to detail them as the design progresses. Based on the project complexity, about 50 to 80% of the time spent on overall cost estimation process is accounted for quantity takeoff that is counting and measuring the amount of material required to complete the building. Previously, this measurement process was done from paper drawings that slowly evolved into 2D CAD drawings and on-screen measurements. This tedious activity is not only time consuming, but also prone to error, which would lead to underestimating or overestimating of the project. The framework of building information modeling has allowed intelligent object data based 3D models that can be managed in a collaborative common data environment to help all stakeholders to access the geometric and functional information of the building at all times. Their interoperability feature allows it to be used in numerous ways to support all construction activities. With respect to cost estimation, the data stored in the model can be easily retrieved for preparing the budget with the help of information in the model and associated rate libraries that can be pre scheduled So essentially, 5D BIM is not just one software or a tool. It is rather an approach to estimate the cost of the project using intelligent BIM models. It involves people, processes, and technologies. I have some interesting data from one of the research papers published back in 2014, aimed at quantifying the time saved in quantity takeoff, comparing the traditional on-screen CAD and BIM approach. We can see that the time spent on training people is almost twice than that of the traditional approach, but the numbers for implementation and extracting results is almost 50% lesser than traditional approach. In another case study, roughly 80% of the time was saved during the material takeoffs for these line items that you see on screen. By automating the tedious task of quantifying, quantity surveyors can spend time on proposing value addition to the project by brainstorming construction strategies and cost saving, factoring unforeseen risks, and of course, have more productive what if I do that sessions with your clients to come up with cost estimates for multiple design options. And this also means that you can spend in, send in your tender responses sooner than other bidders and gain a competitive advantage. We all know how tight the bidding process is. All of this is possible because of the information embedded in the BIM models. I really like the way this image describes the reality of BIM models. The tip of the iceberg 
indicates the 3D geometry that you see, but what we do not see is the magnitude of functional information that they offer to the overall value. Sorting and classification of information is very critical to make this happen. So what is classification? So classification system can be understood in a very simple way. Let's look at this image, right? So let's say you have this pile of books in your room and it's, uh, it's 10 p.m. and you want to read the story book for your kid at this bedtime. By the time you find the book, it's already 6 a.m. and there's no way that <laughs> that requirement that you wanted to do was going to happen. But on the other hand, if you had a bookshelf that was properly arranged in any order that you feel comfortable with, it could be genres, it could be you know, the alphabetical order or size of the books and so on. And you, the, the time that you take to find that one book out of this organized content would be much easier than this haphazard manner. So there's that. So basically classification of information is a strategy to organize and classify the information of built environment. So this helps you to plan things easier and also the standardize the presentation of information with which you can enable information to be exchanged easily and in a more clear manner with, with the teams that are spread across globally. This also allows you to easily produce, store, and retrieve, retrieve the information across different stages of the project. So like we saw in the library example or the books example, there are different ways you can classify the information. There are multiple ways in which classification of project information can also be done, but these are the four major types of classification that are followed across the world. So the first thing on the list is master format. So master format is basically having a set of specification for different construction activities that is divided in a master list of division and section numbers. Here, I will show you an example of master list. And uh, as, you, as you can see on the right, this has the underground piping and accessories uh, activity, which is under the division 22 plumbing that you see on the left. So these groups allow you to manage all of the specifications at once, since it's a standardized way of making uh, having specifications listed the list will be the same, the list will be available to both contractors and owners at all times. So the next time you look into a BOQ, you do not have to worry about where is the services related to plumbing. So you know that it is under division 22, which comes after division 21. So this easier retrieval and uh, sorting of information helps uh, all the stakeholders in the project. So, Uniformat is a format that allows you to divide the construction information based on functional elements of the project, functional elements of the build. This allows the facility to be priced at elemental level. So this image makes it more clearer where you can see the substructure, shell, interiors, service equipment, and so on. So these are the different level one categories wherein if you drill further down, you will be able to see the different activities and different elements that are in those uh, categories. So this will allow you to code these individual elements to back to your model and will help you sort information properly when you're using it for uh, quantity takeoffs. So UniClass provides a comprehensive system that can be used for all project information for the entire industry, including infrastructure, landscape, engineering services, and of course, the building sector, providing for and supporting for all stages of the project life cycle. So here is a list of codes that you can see that form of information, products, 
tools and equipment, all denoted by short forms FI, PR, and so on. On the right hand side, you can see the codes for a particular system, and that you can see listed, and the detail goes from a broader view to a more detailed view as the uh, uh, as you further drill down into the course omniclass is also working in a similar manner this is used for organizing library materials product literature and project information so this image here will give you a comparison between uniclass omniclass and iso 12006 framework so both Omniclass and Uniclass are carefully structured in a way that it adheres to the standards set out in ISO 12006. The corresponding table 36 is for information and on the Uniclass you have FI that is form of information. Table 23 talks about products and same in Uniclass as well. So this way you will be able to assign information codes for each of these different products that you see in your building and the model and the documentation that you do so the next time somebody wants to find a particular information they know that if they search under this code name they will be able to find it and you do not have to worry about the file naming structure so we've seen that this classification of information has been helping us to organize data so till now we've seen that bim model is the centerpiece of the whole process at all stages the cost the cost estimator has to review the model and make meaningful reports out of it once the design is finalized and tendered out as per the boq and specifications we still need to track and verify quantities during and post construction this is where it would get tricky if it were not for the as-built scanning services that we offer. With our top-of-the-line laser scanners and digital technology workflow, we can compare the building versus the design building information model to see deviations. When the BIM is updated with as-built data, accurate measurements can be made and complete the build certification at once without having to worry about repeated claim processes. The great thing about BIM in a common data environment is that all of this data is centrally stored and is available for all stakeholders, whether it is contractor, owner, or cost estimator, to see and verify the data that is presented. Right. So now, till now, we've seen all of the great things that BIM can do. But there are some challenges that we face during implementation of 5D BIM. So building information modeling is still focused or is, is still driven by people and it requires building data to be rightly fed by people. So this is limited by the individual capability and might cause some errors in during data feed. So because of this, there is a requirement of extensive training for the construction professional to ensure that the building model is being developed in a way that is required in the intended usage. So along with that, there is a requirement of having a comprehensive BIM execution plan that details out the model progression and the different level of detail, different level of need that is required at each stage of the project. I will show you in the next slide an image that highlights the way you need to detail out a uh, level of detail requirement. So in this uh, table, you are able to see that each row is having a level of detail and the corresponding BIM use case for that project. So LOD 300 for this application is for only limited to 3D visualization use case, wherein the geometrical information requirement is that all elements modeled should have accurate shapes and sizes. And we need to have a confirmation whether if finishes are also required to be indicated for 3D element. 
no major non geometric or functional elements are required because it's just for seeing it's just for visualization of the geometry but in the second case in the second row you can see that the intended use case is quantity extraction so for this you need to have same of the uh, above elements the, the above uh, the information that is specified that is shape and sizes to be accurate along with that there is also a requirement of having families and objects that are in the model to be structured layer wise to give quantity as per boq format also in the non geometric information section you can see that the material specification as per boq format and param parameter in parametric information has to be embedded into the model so likewise if you detail out the requirements of information in the model both the contractor and the owner the designer are all clear about what is required and what they can expect out of this model so going into going further into the implementation challenges that we face the next thing is the inconsistent model and uh, accuracy of the model <clears throat> so most of the times what happens is you know uh, due to hurry or something it's friday 5 o'clock and you want to go home you quickly push some of the elements that were supposed to be in mechanical equipment category into electrical equipment category right there might be another case where you had to model columns for 10 10 levels but you drew one single column stretching all the way from level 1 to level 10 but that's not how construction at site is done so the columns need to be built out level wise and that's how the model should also be built considering the constructability of that building so the tip here is to make sure that you consider the modeling to be done based on the building is built based on the way building is built the next thing is to make sure that the definition of boq and the specification format is clearly defined at the initial stage to make sure that we do not end up with the miscommunication during uh, you know the tendering process at uh, difficult stages and also we need to remember that not everything that is required to be in the model will be available in the boq it will be available in the model so this could be the an example could be uh, the consultancy services and it could be the cleaning and housekeeping services or some of the elements like uh, we only consider things about uh, you know uh, surface area and volumetric quantities but we do not consider how a design shape affects the cost of that particular installation so these things are not directly available to you in the model and you have to make sure you you have to work around to bring that required quantity and also that costing back into the model so because of this incapabilities of uh, the current modeling software there is a requirement of you having to use uh, specialized third party software technologies to bring about this whole 5d bim into your project so we we believe that the role of ai and big and big data analytics will help minimize the human involvement in 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 these daily uh, you know mundane repetitive activities after weighing out these pros and cons we feel that 5d bim implement 5d bim implementation is the way to go forward about for cost estimation in the next session uh, murli sir will throw some more light on the reality of 5d bim implementation and his experience with it that's the end of my session hope it helped you to get an overview of 5d bim over to you sir thank you sridhar <clears throat> just share my screen can you see my screen now uh, uh, either is my screen is visible yes yes okay see. thank you i think uh, pooja and uh, sridhar has given a very comprehensive overview <clears throat> in terms of what is the service as well as in terms of the bim and particularly 
I really enjoyed that. Uh, Sridhar has the story about the books, housekeeping, and what is it, how to access those data, what we need, even after five years or 10 years, you know, we are many times will be <clears throat> struggling to get those information. I think that some of the information are very relevant. And uh, I think it's a very uh, a core with respect to the construction industry, what we are dealing with at the moment. So uh, I would just uh, introduce the our organization in a couple of slides and touch upon some basic information about what's the impact of the cost management services on account of the beam interruption, uh, benefits of 5D, and the future of cost management and the follow up with the question answer. So first of all, I would like to thank the audience. I think there are quite a number of audience are there today in the weekdays and the spending in the afternoon session, uh, taking out their busy schedule in terms of projects and their day-to-day uh, -day things. So I represent the uh, DLS professional service and uh, this is our team. Uh, we have a senior leader uh, based out of Bangalore, Mumbai, and as well as in Gurugao. And our offices in uh, Bangalore, Australia, we have uh, associates uh, who part of our partnership, strategic partnership, uh, who's currently the uh, engage in terms of the knowledge sharing as well as the business relationship. That's a kind of uh, strategic partnership we have. And in India, we have the presence in Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Pune, and Delhi, Gurugao. So the one key thing is the, the team all uh, comes with a strong, the core domain experience of the peers and cost management. And all are the chartered surveyors from the uh, RACS for many years. <clears throat> and we offer the service uh, like uh, starting from cost consulting audit, including the early stage of the cost appraisal, cost planning, estimate cash flow management, and through the QS services, which is as basic like uh, what Steve has said about 50% of the time. I'm really uh, interested to know that kind of data for the measurement services and making bills of quantity, valuation of works and variation management. One of the important things as part of our service like contracts and procurement, uh, which is nowadays is gaining a much more importance because of that, the large state of the projects and the way in which it operates uh, in the current market. We also have the special service like cost benchmarking, valuation and reinstatement, and also assessment of the life cycle costs. Our approach is uh, like we always expect and request the client or engagement in a very early stage to make use of, to make the maximum benefit to the project and the project we associate. So the early engagement will definitely will get you more benefit because many of the times if the engagement comes in the middle of construction, the commitment made in a very early stage as part of the procurement slash contract, and we are left with a very limited control or cost management in bringing back the cost object, the project objective with respect to the cost and contractual arrangements. We uh, engage uh, in a very early stage to from the very early stage of due diligence, design, cost planning, recruitment, construction, and testing and handing over. And we are very glad and uh, being very specific with respect to the deliverables on each and every stage uh, linked with our performance, uh, key performance linked also. So that gives us more confidence in terms of what we are agreed and committed to the client in managing the, the scope and services what we agree. <clears throat> the impact of the <clears throat> cost management services on the team. So I think street there is one of the slides is highlighted. Uh, it's very valid and very information also. The success of the construction project is the information. So we could see the very early stage when the projects, the client decide to go ahead with some kind of the uh, facility. It's a very minimal information starts with some head count, space per person, or kind of uh, the project duration or by when they're planning to occupy. So these are the key major, three or four major criteria with that we have to start with that kind of the uh, advising the client on the cost and other associated information. So what I could see that the, uh, the support of the BIM 5D, uh, I just focused my presentation only about the 5D to relate to the cost and the, the uh, peer management. So this 
uh, embracing the fifth dimension of the 5D gene definitely will help the cost manager or the client to achieve benefits in the beam landscape. So, what it means? So, the beam connects the cost factor to a 3D model for making the cost estimation process consistent, automated, and precise. Uh, just, uh, I think, a couple of information may be a kind of duplicate because the uh, Sridhar has covered. However, I'm not going to talk about on the technology side or the future. I will try maximum about what's the practical problem we faced or challenges we faced and how do we mitigate it uh, during our course of the project deliverables. So the uh, things are clear uh, with respect to the, what is the unique cap capability of the beam, 5D beam, in providing the automated quantity takeoff. So what it means. It's not that the model is ready and we just click the button and get the quantity. No. So there are, I think Sridhar is also outlined what is the principles and <clears throat> the uh, structure in which the information need to be just arranged even before the developing the model. So these are all some of the self-disciplinary uh, process we need to adapt ourselves in the early stage. Definitely will be a very long term and uh, on the longer benefit, it will be helpful and it will avoid a lot of uh, repetitive and abortive work. The way that I still recall about a decade back, I was attending some conference in the UK and it's more than 10, 12 years. And they were talked about the beam in the construction industry very seriously. And the I, I'm sure the UK and Singapore uh, countries are taking the lead in implementing the, the beam in their construction industry. And uh, because of one of the kind of investment and kind of projects, uh, the way they were executed, I think been supported and uh, benefited of quite large. They were talking about what are the various challenges and early stages of that. And I'm sure in the last 10, 12 years, the way that the, the development happens in terms of the, uh, the guidance or what the other information being covered as part of the development is quite substantial and I'm sure. Uh, in our country, we can uh, make use of those information and adapt and we can move on. So what is this impact? So it's uh, mitigate, it's a lot of rework, a redesign and later stage of the construction, thereby reducing the cost overhead. Uh, we also understand the construction industry is a very dynamic and um, the last couple of years is much more dynamic in terms of what the client or what the end user, the workplace strategy or workplace requirements are completely changed and uh, the last, the post pandemic, I think we could see much more dynamic information in terms of using the space. I think this is going to help a lot. And in terms of uh, taking a quick kind of decision in redesigning the space, as well as before commitment on the cost. This is going to have the impact, positive impact in terms of effective project analysis and management throughout the life cycle. Of construction project. We always look at only on the investment, capital investment side, and we never look at in terms of the what is it, the operational side or the life cycle pro project, life cycle of the project. Uh, what Streeter and team and the suffix is addressed, it's not only the, the investment or the initial construction period, but through the life cycle, it's uh, much uh, important as well as many clients when we speak to the early stage, they say that we need one single agency or one single solution which covers both in terms of the construction as well as the maintenance through the life cycle of the project. <clears throat> this is some more information uh, like what is really the impact with respect to the adapting the digital platform of integrated cost management. Yes, definitely need to be a technology adaptation. The way when that uh, ad introduced in the year, uh, maybe about Two decades back, part of last year's two group is a big uh, look at it because everyone using the uh, drafter and T square uh, of course I used in the start of my academy. So we were using the T square and drafter, very big drawing board. That's what the cat came in the essence. It was like the, the boom, and that everyone was very uh, uh, know the how this is going to have that negative impact to the market, of course. Uh, but to the contrary, the technology added a lot of uh, the benefits to the industry, the construction industry, and the, the architectural uh, architect or the design firm or the, the industry much 
more opportunity created than any negative impact. So the other kind of the, so the technology adaptation is a much, uh, the, I would call it as a top priority and the greater flexibility and informed decision-making process with free visualization. So in the typically the two dimensional drawings, there is a couple of, unless otherwise you are on the ground and you're experienced and spend time, your early days of looking at the construction process, uh, the time study, motion study, so visualization of the initial state of the project costing around the contract state, it's much uh, difficult rather than with this kind of tool, I think it's going to be a, uh, it will be a very advantage and can be a much informed decision can be taken. And uh, no doubt the technology tools uh, uh, comes with a kind of challenge and with the today learning opportunities to the cell or to the third party is much more. I think upskilling those kind of the technology tools, uh, learnings, I don't think any major challenge with the youngsters today market, they are all learn in a very, very shorter period. So this also is, uh, I feel it's a greater positive impact over the cost, project cost estimate as well as budget. And uh, uh, this is going to be a 360 cloud-based platform. It's going to help, and it's going to be in a real-time basis where tracking of the cost can be achieved. And uh, since there is a quite a lot of the preparation in terms of the discipline, discipline way of approach, I'm sure we can get it right at approach, first approach, and also the structured approach will yield a lot of savings on account of any body work or repetitive work. I just categorized some of the benefits in the large, uh, the major four categories. Uh, of course, these are all the practical experience and what is we have uh, come up in terms of the, in the last five, seven years of the experience. And we were fortunate enough to engage implementing the beam in some of the large campuses way back uh, maybe in the last six, seven years. The, the basic challenge, I think I would like to add one of two points with the Sridhar, what he highlighted, what is the major challenge? Yes, this is the, the client or the end user who's trying to adapt the new the BIM based the cost control or cost estimate. They always want to check, okay, is that correct? The output is correct with respect to the quantity or in terms of the cost. This is a major stake, the major investment. No doubt, definitely we are handling the other's money and there is a very large uh, in terms of the accuracy as well as the confidence and trust is very important. So the only the client would like to check and it give me the, the traditional way of, okay, what, if you go with the two dimensional drawing, what is the quantity and the cost part of it? Yes, that is the, we take the challenge and put the challenge and we are also established and demonstrated both in terms of the traditional way of working with the two dimensional part, the drawing, and with the BIM model, how we are very close, and what are the other enhancements done with respect to the model adaptation. So this one challenge, as a cost advisor, I would request everyone who's working on that part of the project to consider while we are advising clients on it for the first time. So uh, the I feel that benefits, it's quite uh, multidimensional, and in terms of categorizing the various stages of the project, I feel the due diligence stage, very early stage, the client uh, might have identified three or four broad uh, land parcel and they wanted to know, okay, which parcel with ideally will suit for their, the project to develop. So with the very early stage, very initial model as a kind of the very uh, block or the past modeling, we can be able to advise the client in a very dynamic model because always the kind of the initial stage is the data sheet level and they will not go to the detailing, but at least with the click of the button, they would like to see what okay, the change this instead of the particular selection site ABC, what would be my uh, the cost benefit or other kind of the variances with respect to the selection. So this also will help the designer to make or the client making the decision very early stage. So with respect to your orientation or with respect to that for the alignment of those buildings or dimensions, some of the shapes. I think uh, these are all, uh, it will give you a very a direct and indirect benefit in terms of what the cost of the projects which are going to take up. And there's a lot of alternative cost model to guide or as the real estate planning. Of course, there is a kind of phase one, phase two, phase two, or in terms of what is the 
the needs of the business need, the real estate, the CRE may have some kind of the policy or the principles to how these uh, the, the spaces are going to be delivered. The next stage of the design or cost planning, of course, we always look for uh, the elemental cost as well as functional cost to optimize in terms of the, the facility. I think this the benefit of the bill definitely will be a more advantage in terms of uh, the initial or the design and cost planning stage. So while we develop a cost estimate, not as a block level, at least the next level of at least the elemental level, we can also assist in a very real-time basis the client in making a decision in terms of selecting the materials or in terms of uh, the kind of alternative cost model when you're developing with the, uh, uh, the team. Uh, we can also guide and assist to prepare the, the various options of the business case and what's the best option to go for it also. Of course, no doubt, design to cost, and uh, the automated creation of the database and cost data mapping in an early stage will help when the design evolves and how this detailing can be captured in a uh, next stage of the project implementation. We come across many challenges, particularly on the building envelope system or the structural system, whether to go with the PT or the, uh, the flat slab or other different structural system. Of course, nowadays there is a uh, a lot of high rise building. Even I was yesterday, I was reading something. The Hyderabad is coming up with some 60 floors of the uh, residential tower. And uh, of course, Mumbai and all, it's very common. But other <clears throat> cities like Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad is also on the way of uh, developing those kind of high rise buildings. So I'm sure we will have the very advantage in deciding or selecting those structural systems. Uh, and the building envelopes where we can uh, align to the design and cost because always the design can go and but later we realize the cost is not fit in the budget then definitely we will work on that. Let us then uh, the beam I'm sure of the real time basis will also help the designer as well as the, the client to take an appropriate decision. We always need to have the challenges in terms of the heading of the car park uh, and sure the parking space now, the, as per the statutory or the uh, authority starts from 25% goes up to 36% or 37% in the city. So, this contributes a quite lot of the money directly, indirectly paid by the end user or the tenant. So, these building height changing some couple of meters or MM, how is going to impact the cost? I think this will help in a very shortest period, which will also help in terms of. Some of the time, sometimes when we have the challenges with authority not able to approve their height of the building, 100, 100 meters, 78 meters, particularly the airport authority. So we can take a quick decision and also what is the impact to the other flows or any modification needed to those structural systems. So those kind of decisions I'm, I'm feel and I'm sure everyone agree with me, these kind of decisions can be happen uh, very shortest time period. I also told about the visualization will help the better accurate measurement and estimation. And uh, we can also use, and in terms of the identifying the critical uh, works or high value items, which will have a direct impact on the project schedule or in terms of the cost or kind of very unique uh, material which will be planning for the project. Of course, the tracking is one of the better control if you have to go for the, if you adapt to high degree. Procurement stage, uh, I think uh, the, the digital platform, uh, with so many options we have, I think in the last 10 years, there is a lot of evolved, uh, the, the development happened in terms of the procurement, the digital plat uh, platform, where entered the, the procurements happen on the uh, e-basis, e e-procurement, both in terms of submission, evaluation, or award. I'm sure with this, much more, comprehensiveness as well as the commitment in terms of uh, the contract so contract engagement can happen in a very uh, structured manner also in terms of the commitment. The time, of course, there is a the time can be optimized and we can have a better contractual administration. I recall one of our previous association with the city for office, they were identifying some of the model those contract administration wherein we can tie back the, the contractor in terms of the 
the cost model, they, I need the beam model, how they can be the contractual tie up because whatever we prepare the contract forms, be it a PDF or international contract, other forms, how do we tie those uh, contractual arrangements in a soft copy of this model and also any other arrangements bearing tomorrow for any disputes, how we can take it up in a address in a very effective manner. Of course, uh, the early engagement of the vendor partners is pretty much is very uh, advantage in this. And the audit requirement, it's typically a kind of always, a, it's a every stage, a, we used to have a separate time allotted, okay, tomorrow the next week is audit, and we just prepare all these informations are there in the system. So I think with the help of this beam, we no need to have a separate time or no need a dedicated time to go for the preparation of the audit. Wherein if you are, <clears throat> the information and things are being handled in a structured manner, I think the real time manner that you can, can do your audit and can be a compliance with all those project uh, requirements. Uh, I think we talked about the construction methods and technology and uh, real time vendor evaluation, yes. So this also gives you the kind of some of the, uh, the, the, the contract arrangement. Uh, the traditional views are the three measurement contract, multiple package. I think we are involved in a much different kind of arrangement like uh, GMP, the general contract model, development partner, or even if you call it as a design build, development build. There's a lot of vari uh, the, the variety of contract models are available and uh, the industry is also slowly adapting uh, the different kinds of to suit the project timeline and also the end user. Uh, this is the couple of more slides I cover on the construction stage. Uh, we not only we can use this beam for the class reduction and other things which Steve had addressed, we can also use it as a part of your payment certification, contract payment certification in conjunction with your the project schedule, which is part of the 4D. And we can also see the forecast and also uh, look ahead in terms of if I have to go with this kind of the planned uh, scheduled projects uh, development and what is the cash, in, cash flow, or in case of any delay, what is the delay analysis with respect to cost, the time, and also any additional impact to our overall financial arrangements. And of course, monitoring construction progress in terms of valuation, which is uh, said, and problems of payment and final payment. So traditionally, we used to have the interim payments and final payment, again, some audit checks, peer review checks. I think this can be eliminated with the help of both the, uh, the beam progress, which is real-time basis monitored and recorded, uh, or I mean, the, in terms of updated. With that, we can create and quick progress payment, thereby your but the certification, payment certification for the contractor on a very early stage rather than waiting for 14 days and 21 days. Cash flow forecast is analysis is much important one. I think that the, the amount of stake, the project stake, what we have, very high stake, those days are about 100, 200,000 square feet of the projects are uh, considered as the large projects. We are talking today 300, 3 million to 10 million, which some of the projects, which is happening in India, not only in overseas. The amount of stake and what the time to record the looking for is very challenging and very dynamic. Planned versus actual analysis and very important thing on the reporting. The time to report uh, the, uh, the gives a kind of good, uh, the important approvals from the client side, which is very important at every stage of the project. The leadership, yes, the investors or even the leadership level of the client. They look for a one page or two page of information, which call it out what is those the risk and what are those opportunities in a simple manner. So it could be able to generate those kind of information, not necessarily to okay that I report, I, I generated a report 10th of August and today I'm 18th of August. Is there any way I can look at the report in a real time basis? I think with this kind of uh, the digital platform, we could be able to integrate those reporting and bring in those values to the client in case of decision to change the or modify those using the space or the project of the planning uh, from the client perspective, because I'm sure everyone, the client also having the, the end user, which is their user for those uh, facilities, there's a lot of dynamic uh, things that are happening. So they can have a quick decision and to take or convert those facility in a different purpose or partially or fully. 
Handing over stage, I think uh, I said that managing the variation, real-time basis, audit compliances, customizing that cost data to align with the maintenance period. Always when we go for the tender, not only the, the construction part, we also take kind of the ANC part, which is very important. We can expect a much better price from the vendor partner or the contractor or supplier while we tender out both the capital purchase as well as the AMC component. They try to impress the client with a much attractive price. I think I would suggest we can make use of those information to tag it with those, all those when the construction to the maintenance transfer with the COVID data information, what is also taken care in terms of cost. I think our uh, facility team will get a much a larger financial benefit managing those facilities and also the, the right team to handle or be managing those facilities. And the cash flow forecast. Uh, many times the cash flow the quarterly basis, the expectation is 1% variance or 2% variance because of the oneness with respect to the globally that's managed by the client team, or also the kind of investment or the interest shape charges what is happening will have a lot of impact to that with what is the cost of the construction. And of course, the project capitalization may not wait till the project complete. As and when it's complete, 70%, 80%. Some cases, there's a requirement from the chartered accountant saying that okay, the project is the complete 70, 80% or 90%. We can go ahead for the project capitalization to get some kind of indirect benefit with respect to this taxes and other things which we can achieve with this kind of the uh, This is my last slide. So the, what is the future? Uh, I would just call it as a lot of change or positive change has been happening in the last five years. The way the things are being incorporated, the client, not only the client, the end user corporates, the private developer, the developing, uh, the industry developer, or the, the way they are looked at the facility is much changed. We, we thought the only the, the green building certification be the Lead or other kind of certification added the value to the facility wherein the BIM is playing a much important role. The last couple of uh, years, what we, uh, the, the client was interested in being the corporate, like I, I think I'm happy to share for some of the names like Tata in the kind of the, the corporate real estate side or Godrage or even on some of the private developers, RMZ, trustees or even the, the, the Sattva, we are much keen to go ahead with the, the team platform. Uh, of course, they're realizing that who is even the end user or the corporate, the tenants who are looking for this facility on a team to make use of those facility design on those investing their kick out or the TI facility that they plan for it. And I think this will also be the kind of uh, good advantage in terms of the meeting the dynamic business needs and uh, uh, earlier analysis in the easier analysis of project risk. Uh, Sridhar has touched upon the 5D with the AR and VR. With this, we can be able to achieve much more uh, beneficial. And uh, I also understand there's a lot of projects mandated now, a lot of airports. Most of the airports are mandated to go for the beam in their projects implementation. I wish I uh, ensure the future of the other client also look forward implementing the beam and uh, to go ahead to save those uh, kind of the limited uh, whatever the cost as well as making the project successful meeting the project as well. So that's my uh, kind of coverage we'd like to share. I'm not sure I've taken more time or we have some time for the QA. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was very informative and I'm sure our audience also felt the same. So with this, I would like to just highlight uh, that our uh, audience can post their questions and indulge in the chat box. Uh, Murali sir and I will be taking questions if you have any. And of course, on this platform, I would like to uh, highlight that with the strategic partnership that now we've had with uh, DLS India, we will now be bringing the best of QS knowledge and digital technology from BIM world to all of the clients that we will be serving now. So if you have any questions, please post and uh, we will look into this. 
Right. And maybe take a little more time. If any questions they want to share it across email, you can. Yeah. Uh, like that, we can share it uh, either. I'm happy to address if I can. Yes, yes, definitely. So a couple of questions are there in the chat box. I think uh, one question is there are large projects implementation happening in India pretty much. Uh, not now. It started almost that's what I highlighted a few years back. And particularly a lot of campuses where the, the owner, the corporate, be a corporate or even the private developer, uh, they are very keen and they are already implementing. So all, a couple of projects already completed and few projects are in the midway and the early stage of the implementation. These are all very large projects, uh, starting from uh, 2 million, 3 million, goes up to 6, 7 million. One of the projects that are happening in Bangalore, I'm sure it's going to be a, starting with a 3 million and it's going to be a 8 to 9 billion over a period of 4 to 5 years commercial um, commercial building, the core initial. One question is about the cost manager limitation in terms of time and bandwidth to check whether the definitions are complete and designer meaning all elements detailing nomenclature is fulfilled or not such that we can directly work on quantity cost. What can be the way to check the fulfillment in the designer article? Okay. I think this is important. So that's why the one of the good uh, or I will call it as the integrated approach and the collaborative approach plays a very beneficial to all those who are part of the project partnership, be it a designer, engineer, or even client, or even the project manager slash cost manager. The early stage of the workshop, while we set up, uh, is set to address those things, will uh, give you more benefit and advantage, uh, particularly on those uh, setting the expectations, what Steve has said at the very early stage. Set those basic the, the housekeeping, not only housekeeping, but all those. Because the way we were driving the car two, two decades back, the back the ambassador appeared, we were struggling to be the so in kind of the, the gears and things. Now that the cars come with the kind of advanced voice control, but we are we, we should know how to use that also. Same way, this kind of facility is there, or the the flexibility and the advantage is there in the team. But how to use this? As long as we don't respect that kind of that the benefits and we prepare ourselves. Uh, then we can realize the maximum benefit out of it. So that's my uh, kind of feedback. I think, uh, one question is about how cost management professional uses being currently designer or getting involved. Uh, I think Sridhar has addressed the, it's a combination of the uh, designer, the engineer, and the project manager, cost manager, of course. The independent party now is like a BIM manager or BIM project manager. Uh, then we were working on some of the large projects, like it's, it's the uh, professional team. In those days are only three or four that architect slash project manager who runs anything and everything. Later, it's extended to some of the other uh, services. Uh, last 15, 20 years back, when we started some of the Pito project campus, I think we were about uh, 18 or 20 different specialized services starting from acoustic, signage, graphic, consultancy. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but it's a quite of specialized services are evolved and definitely should make use of that. So to answer the question in terms of whether the designer are getting involved, yes, it is the involvement of all, but at the same time, how do we use uh, in the sense it's again, it's uh, Sridhar has highlighted the three broad categories. I'm not sure Sridhar or Puja highlighted what's the major broad category of whether it is the 
digital project management or digital management or design management. So those categories will decide what scope to be part of the, uh, the architect or part of the specialized the service provider like the BIM manager. You can use the public sector procurement. Yes, uh, that's what I said. The, uh, the many of the airports, of course, this are PPP model, and even on the, uh, I'm sure in some uh, public pro uh, the government projects that they are advised to go for the procurement and the uh, BIM. Uh, the airport is quite common, and not in India as also in many other countries. Architect design professionals generally have independent teams for working on architectural aspects of meeting. We have had experience when unique designs are developed on Revit, while interior designs on CAD. So, is there a way to create integration enabled? So, I think Steve is uh, responding. I'll leave it to that. Address apprehension senior management investing the tech based approach. The investment is again depends on what is the ROI. So, in this case, that the return is very, very short period, and it's only the matter of what is that acceptance. So like, uh, uh, it's the uh, adaptability. It's, uh, we, we cannot just say that, okay, the, we should not worry that, okay, it's something like the software and we, it's something we cannot, as a civil engineer or any engineer cannot understand this kind of things. It's kind of application. Once we understand the common and the logic and rational, uh, I think the technology or the, the the team which developed that the beam in terms of the model and what the, the end user with the integration of those, it's not going to be the very comprehensive or it's going to be the very cost effective. Uh, why I'm saying this, the way in which the private developer uh, for their core and shell, what they're interested or developing in terms of the committed towards to go for the business in the last two years is very, very, really appreciated. appreciated. Obviously, there are taking more time than the schedule. Uh, if no further questions, uh, I would uh, request that you can collect any further questions. Happy to respond also. Yeah. All right. The last question is uh, the pyramids by the question side. Automation is fewer and cost may be affected by convenience need. Absolutely no. That's what I gave the example when the CAD introduced the architect, architectural or architect services where of that opinion whether it's there going to be a, but we all upgraded to the next level. So the true value of fewer and cost management in terms of adding the value, creating the value, it's going to be much more. The fewer and cost management, it's not a, just a measuring that what it is and adding the estimate, it's advisory role. So, and the contracts management, uh, I think the way in which the future develops, we need to be much more uh, equipped to handle this kind of the contractual issues or the dispute resolutions. The way the, uh, the international uh, contracts or contractors or the international practicing firms operating in India being a large market here to work on it. So we should focus our the values and creating values in the advisory role. And this game will definitely be done in terms of upskill ourselves or upgrade ourselves to the next level of delivering the process. That's my honest opinion. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sridhar and Mr. Valen, sir, for sharing very informative and valuable session. There were 100 plus participants joined to this webinar, and I would like to thank everyone uh, joining us to this webinar. We will connect again soon and bring more and more very interesting topics in our industry. So stay tuned with the Desapex in at LinkedIn and all other social media platforms. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Kuja. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Velan, sir. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Velan, sir. Thank you.